Hello everyone, welcome to Fedan Tutorials. Are you a final year student of biochemistry, microbiology, public health, agri, physics, you know, and even engineering? Now, and you are trying to write your own final year project and you're finding it difficult or you need guidance. This video is specifically for you because in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to write your final year project yourself without anybody coming in to write it for you. Now we're going to look at how to write the chapter one, which is the first chapter, or we call it introductory chapter, and then chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, and chapter five. Well, in the course of this video, I'm going to be teaching you chapter one. In our next video, we'll continue with the next chapter. Are we together now? Now, when we're talking about chapter one, which is the introduction, what are the concepts? What are the divisions? Are we together now? We begin to look at what we have background to the study, which is the first thing in the chapter one. We look at statement of the problem, we look at aims and objective of the study. We look at research questions or hypothesis. We look at significance of the study. We also look at scope and limitations. Are we together? Now, we also look at definition of terms. Now, this is optional. I will explain each and every one of these things. I will then also stay tuned. Don't click off. Please give the video a thumbs up so that YouTube can recommend this video to other persons to, to watch and learn. And if you've not subscribed, you know what to do please click that subscribe button so that the channel can grow more and let's look at the first one which is background to the study now in background to the study what are we looking at here yeah, we're trying to lay a foundation of our study say this is our topic kinetic properties of rodanese in wister rat's liver under oxidative stress condition now if i'm talking about background to the study what i'm trying to say is that i'm trying to lay a foundation of my study i'm starting with what is already known and how I get what is already known is through scientific research articles. So I will use published article to get an existing knowledge. Now, after I've studied to get an existing knowledge, what is the next thing I will do? I will now introduce the gap that this topic is trying to fill in what in this new study. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying, because in every research topic, there's what we call gap, just as I've been saying for a very long time now. I will together, that's what we call research gap. A search gap is what this particular study is trying to fill in so that we introduce my research gap. For instance, let's say this is our topic. Now, what I'm going to do in this background is that I will now say, for instance, we have say rhodanese is a detoxifying enzyme in cyanide metabolism. I would you know? Now, I can say that, you know, the, pro the properties um, has been explored. The properties of this particular uh, rhodanese in the liver of Wisterat has been explored. It has been scientifically seen. But, you know, one of the issues is that, you know, the kinetic properties of this, you know, we start at liver under oxidative stress condition is underexplored. So that means this my new study is trying to, you know, show that or trying to prove or bring into consideration the kinetic property of this we start at liver under what oxidative stress condition. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. That's the gap my research is trying to fill. Initially, I've explained what rodanist enzyme are. I said that they are detoxifying enzyme in what cyanide metabolism detoxifying. Now, and I also say that is a background, that's a foundation. And I also say that although we already know the properties of this particular rodanese in the liver of Wisterat, we know the kinetic properties. But what is underexplored is this particular kinetic properties of this particular deliver, uh, liver of Wisterat under oxidative stress condition. It is underexplored. So that is the gap that my study is trying to fill in. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Okay, now for the second one, which is statement of the problem. Now, here you just have to be direct and scientific. What is the practical problem? What are the knowledge gap? What hasn't been tested? What hasn't been proven? What are the issues that you are finding? Or what are the issues that you think that is associated with this research? This is where you state it. Statement of the problem. Be direct and scientific. Don't miss word. Don't try to, you know, sugarcoat everything. Say it as it is. Are we together now? Now to the third one, which is the aims and objectives of the study. I want you to understand something. We have the aims, we have the objectives. Now for the aims, I want you to understand that the aim is more like you looking at the big picture. Now that your topic that you have, you have to look at the big picture. What are you going to do? Now already you have a topic, kinetic studies, kinetic properties rather, of rodanese in Wister rats under oxidative stress condition. Now if I'm talking about the aim, the aim is not going to be to investigate, I will add the topic, I will not add to investigate the kinetic properties of rodanese in Wister rat's liver under oxidative stress condition. I added to investigate because that's the big picture of what I want to do. 
If my topic is GCMS analysis of the ethyl acetate extract of onion skin, I will say to investigate the GCMS analysis. Are you getting what I'm saying? Of the ethyl acetate extract of onion skin. So that is the aim of my study, to, to investigate this particular stuff here. That is the aim of my study. Okay, since I've explained the aim of the study, now what are the objectives of the study? First of the first objective is to determine the KM and Vmax of this particular rhodanese enzyme under normal and also under what oxidative stress condition. That is the first objective. The second objective is to compare enzyme activity across normal and also treated groups. To compare, I'm talking about this topic now, to compare enzyme activity across normal and oxidative you know group because this is the topic oxidative stress condition so we we'll look at normal and then we we'll look at oxidative stress condition now the third uh, objectives can be to analyze statistical significance using what ANOVA table statistical significance using what ANOVA table now that is for the aims and objectives of this particular study for research questions and hypotheses um i want you to understand something here this is where we begin to look at you know what are the hypotheses of this study now in the hypothesis you state your null and alternative hypothesis which is the h0 and h1 now in h0 h1 h0 usually have not and h1 does not have not what do i mean in h0 now you say there is no significant difference in h1 there is a significant difference remember this will help you in your you know conclusion and all that but in this particular chapter one this is where you state your hypothesis your null and alternative hypothesis. Now, for this particular topic, where we have kinetic properties of rhodanese in Wisterat liver under oxidative stress condition. Now, what you are going to do for your H H naught, how you state your uh, H naught, which is your null hypothesis, is you say there is no significant difference in the rhodanese activity between the treated and the controlled. There is no significant difference in rhodanese activity between the treated and the controlled. Now, if I come to H1, H1 simply means there is a significant difference between the treated and the controlled. This is how to state this particular word, hypothesis. You state your null and alternative hypothesis. I say for the null hypothesis, there is usually a not, which is there is no, it's a negative statement. Here is a positive statement. There is a significant difference. So at the end of the day, you put your H0 when there is no significant difference. Put your H1 when there is what? A significant difference. In the road and its activity between the what treatments and controlled now that is that for this now when we come to you know part five of this particular chapter one which is the introduction look at significant of the study now in the significance of the study we're looking at what is the usefulness of this study what is the aftermath of this study what is the futuristic effect of this study how can the world benefit from this study now this particular study kinetic properties of road and is in wister at liver under oxidative stress condition what we are trying to look at is how can this particular stuff help the human you know nature how can it help the society here this is in my significance of the study i have to think beyond the lab meanwhile everything starts in the lab but i have to think beyond the lab i would remember that we start at we start at is more like is mammals i hope you know right we start at our mammals so whenever we're talking about we start at, we are looking at it as okay, this is something closer to human. So when we're talking about the kinetic properties of rodanis, rodanis is also found in the body of a human. I would know kinetic properties of rodanis in we start at liver under oxidative stress condition. So I'm going to think of what is the futuristic effect of my study, even your topic. How is your topic significant in the society? How is it useful? Are we going to use it in biomedical research? Are we going to use it in medicine? Are we going to use it in biotechnology? Are we going to use it in microbiology or biochemistry? What is the significance? What is the usefulness of the study you are carrying out? Are we together now? So that is that. Let's look at scope and limitation. Under the scope and limitations of the study, we're looking at what the project covers. What are the scope? What are the limitations? What is it that the project covers? We're looking at the number of species used, the kind of species used, the assay method, the sample size, are you getting what I'm saying? The age and all. Now, for example, I can say that the study for this particular topic, I can say that the study is limited to male we start at aged eight to ten weeks, and only the liver is considered and not any other organ. That is a scope and limitation of a study.
because now i've mentioned that the male we start at which sex of them we start at male or would not and then what is the age bracket we said that the age bracket is what eight to ten weeks now which organ are we considering we are considering only the liver and not uh, the kidney or the lungs just the liver you get what i'm saying so this is a scope and limitation of this study now if you look at the number next which is definition of terms which is optional now for those of you most of you might not know what we mean by the km the v max unless you are studying maybe biochemistry so km is all called michael is meant in custard v max is more like maximum velocity so if you don't know these terms it will be very difficult for you so some of the people that might be reading your research might not have studied biochemistry so in definition of terms this is where you explain all these terms what is km what is v max what is oxidative stress what is the road that is this is where you explain all these ambiguous terms so that they can understand and then follow through in your research remember when we are talking about significance of the study significance of the study doesn't mean that only biochemistry people can read it what i say the significance of the study is that its usefulness in the society how can it be able to help humanity in general so in this scenario now we define the terms that are associated with my research that a common man might not really want to understand so now this is this about this particular chapter one which is the introduction chapter now there are seven sections here are we together now in your description i've attached a particular research article that i've shown what is in this chapter one how it looks go through it read it are you getting what i'm saying with the understanding of this you can do well in your chapter one are we together now now if you follow uh, this particular you know a section if you follow this particular rule i've given you you find out that research project is not difficult it's more of logical stuff i would know it's something that you can do easily with your two eyes closed so follow through this sequence and then you will do well absolutely in my next video i'll be teaching you about chapter two which will focus more on literature review so don't click off and you can also add your topic in the comment section so that i can use your topic to teach that literature review in chapter two and even make it easier for you we together now so let me know in the comment section what your project research topic is and i might be able to use it for my next teaching thank you for watching